The NHL season is winding down and the races are heating up both for the playoffs and the Art Ross Trophy. We'll have all of that plus our women's hockey spotlight and a busy weekend of hockey ahead. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I am Gil Martin from Locked On Islanders, and I am joined by my Friday co-host, Rachel Donner of Locked On Flyers. Happy Friday, Rachel. Happy Friday. Man, I can't believe we're this close to the end of the season. I know. It, it, we're getting down to the last 10, you know, 12, 13 games for most teams. It's... Uh, it's an exciting time and lots of races to, to talk about. Uh, let's let's start with the Art Ross Trophy race because that's heating up a lot right now, especially after Thursday's games. Yeah, Nikita Kucherov sitting atop the league uh, stats for points right now with 122. I, it's like we still have like – a dozen games left and he's already at 122 um nathan mckinnon is right behind him at 117 and then connor mcdavid is in the three spot at 112 but interestingly connor mcdavid has three games in hand on nikita kucherov right now so while there is a 10 point difference there like connor mcdavid can do a lot in three games <laughs> Yeah, if he gets hot at the right time, he can certainly close that gap. And and Kucherov has a game in hand on McKinnon. So, right. yeah, it, it'll be interesting. And just the way Kucherov is playing right now is just so impressive. Yeah, and you look at overall shooting percentage, Kucherov is at 15.4, which is, uh, I think, you know, not as high as some of the other guys in the league, uh, but who have much fewer points. But he's just taking there's so many more shot attempts there. Yeah. And 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 that certainly makes a big difference uh, with with the shot attempts. And also, you know, what Kucherov is able to do on the power play, contributing to his success, 33 power play assists so far this year. I mean, he's got to be the favorite with a five-point lead over McKinnon and a 10-point lead over McDavid. But as you said, this race isn't over just yet. No, I'm I, I'm excited, actually, for there to actually be an Art Ross race, right? Okay. Where, you know, in the past, you know, with 20 games to go, it was very clear who was going to win. And now there's at least some question. So that part of it makes it pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely refreshing to see that. And uh in addition to the race for the Art Ross, we also, of course, have playoff races going on right now. And in, in both conferences, there are some really good races to watch. Let's start in the East. I mean, let's go to the Atlantic Division. Florida, three points behind Boston now that the Panthers have lost three in a row. But Florida has a couple of games in hand. Yeah, I think that um, it, it is interesting in the East because there's, you know, teams that we know are definitely going to make the playoffs, like no question. But there's these races for the top of the division and the top of the East in both the Atlantic and the Metro right now. Uh, and those races to me are almost as interesting as the who's going to be in the three spot or who's going to be in the wild card spot races because it will have a big effect on opponents going into that first round. No, no question about it. And, you know, we have Boston and Florida in the Atlantic, the Rangers and the and the Hurricanes in the Metropolitan battling for first place. And, uh, you know, those races are 
two points in the, in the Metro, three points, as we mentioned, in the Atlantic. Those are going to go down to the wire. And, and then for the playoffs, well, let, let's ask you this. How are you feeling about your Flyers right now? It's, I think the next, you know, few games are really going to determine what happens with the Flyers because uh, as we've all been calling it right now, the Flyers are going through this gauntlet of games where they're just playing all top teams. And this weekend is no different. It's a back to back against the Bruins and the Panthers. And um, I think that nobody's going to be angry (laughs) if the Flyers can't push through this because it's, it, you know, six games in 10 days, mostly against top teams. Like, what are you going to do? It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, schedule and timing and, and, and mm-hmm. all of that. How about the Washington Capitals? Here's a team with a minus 31 goal differential, and yet they're three points out of a playoff spot with two games in hand. Yeah, the Caps are are a really interesting uh, situation right now for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think I, I would call their their remaining schedule almost comparable to the Flyers, like a very difficult schedule. But they have two games in hand on the Flyers as well. So they have 14 games left. Flyers have 12 games left. Uh, but the Washington Capitals could and will likely be without Tom Wilson, who is a huge part of that team. Uh, he is having an in-person hearing today uh, for his uh, high-sticking slash that he did. And it is a well-deserved in-person hearing. Like, yes. there is no argument there. Um, deliberate thwacking uh, with his stick there. But um, if he has gone more than five games here, uh, that could have a significant impact on what the Caps are able to do in the home stretch here. Yeah, and they are they have very little margin for error right now with the you know the standings being so tight and so many teams involved. Maybe the best division race right now though <clears throat> is in the central where you have Winnipeg, Colorado and Dallas all tied with 93 points. Dallas has played one more game than Winnipeg and Colorado. This is going down to the wire, and there could be a huge difference between first place and third place as far as the playoffs are concerned. Right. And with uh, Colorado having won seven in a row, I think that they're obviously on the hot streak here. Winnipeg just lost one. Uh, Dallas is is chugging along. But I think that, um, you know, there's just so many question marks here. It's like, can the Colorado Avalanche keep it going? the way that they have been. Uh, Winnipeg has been a huge part of the conversation all season long, uh, but they do go through these little dips and, you know, they're six and four in their last 10. They're going to have to do better than that, I think, to win outright. Uh, But I do think given, you know, the point differential between these top three, and then you look at the wild card race yeah. and the other teams in the central. I think you're looking at your top three. It's just what order is it going to be in? Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, you mentioned the wild card race. You know, LA and Vegas right now are, and Nashville are in, but St. Louis and Minnesota, not that far behind the defending Stanley Cup champions. Uh, that race may also go down to the wire as well. Yeah, I think, you know, again, I am unabashedly team Nashville Predators in this situation, (laughs) but uh, I I do think that it's absolutely bonkers to me that the Vegas Golden Knights are in a wildcard position and the second wildcard position at that, given everything that has happened this season and all the moves that they have made. Um, And the Kings have just been on the struggle bus, but are now in that all important third playoff spot here. I I just, you know, what is going to happen there? Because the Kings and and Vegas are at the same number of games played right now. So there's no games in hand. Um, What's going to happen there? Like that is the big question to me. Yeah. And and how big a shock would it be if Vegas didn't make the playoffs, especially after all the moves they made at the deadline? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So lots to keep an eye on. Going to be an exciting final month of the NHL season. And of course, we'll be with you every step of the way covering that right here on the Locked On NHL podcast. We have got a lot more to discuss 
on today's show. We will have our women's hockey spotlight coming up next with Erica L. Ayala. Plus, we'll take a look at the weekend of hockey ahead. Lots of great games to discuss. All that and more still to come on today's Locked on NHL podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the ice, you've got a shot at greatness. Well, give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. According to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 job credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. It is time for our bi-weekly women's hockey spotlight, and that means we bring in Erica L. Ayala. Erica, welcome back. Always a pleasure to be with you both, Rachel and Gil. Glad to be back. Glad to have you here. Let's start off with some news about Natalie Spooner. Well, we've talked about Natalie Spooner a time or two. A lot of people questioning whether PWHL Toronto taking Natalie Spooner as one of their first draft picks was wise. But Natalie Spooner has been on a tear. And PWHL Toronto now sits at the top of the table, 11-game winning streak. And Natalie Spooner is one of the top scorers in the league. I love this for, for Spooner. I have wrote about, I followed her trajectory at the last winter Olympics. And I think Spooner would be the first person to tell you that you never really know, uh, as someone who has given birth to a child and happens to be an elite athlete, how you're going to bounce back. I've said this before. It's akin to any athlete with an injury, but Natalie Spooner at the top of the table, she and Alex Carpenter who plays for PWHL New York both have 18 points on the season. The breakdown for Spooner is 13 goals and five assists. And as I mentioned, PWHL Toronto, who was at the basement early, at least early on in the season, now in playoff position in that first playoff position, which gives them a lot of power given how the PWHL is doing their playoff format. <clears throat> yeah. What what is can you explain what that power is? Absolutely. So right now, the way that the PWHL is breaking things down, um, they have gone to something known as the golden rule. Well, first, th there are a few there are a few little caveats here. Um, but if you get that top spot, you actually get to pick your opponent. And I guess I should walk back. We have six teams in the PWHL, as you know, Gil and Rachel, and it will be those top four teams that make the playoffs. So if you get that first seed, you get to pick your opponent with um, the teams that are remaining in the playoff hunt. So maybe you don't want to go up against the four team for whatever reason, because you don't match up well head to head, which can happen. But I think that's kind of cool. We also see that there's an incentive for teams that are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs to continue to play tough and gain points in the standings, even after they've been eliminated or all but eliminated. And that is because the team who's the, or the teams who've been eliminated and have the most points will actually get a better draft pick. There will be no lottery. There will be no tanking. And I thought it was interesting. There's, I guess this came from around the 2000s and it was um, introduced and has obviously never taken off in the National Hockey League and a lot of other leagues. But this will be something that the PWHL sees, Rachel. 
Yeah, I'm so excited because I think it, it's something that it has been talked about in the NHL for a long time, uh, but it's just they never consider it. It seems like they never will in, in the grand scheme because I think the lottery is a marquee event for them. So <clears throat> I think that the PWHL is starting off right and implementing this from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's going to make for an exciting time. I'm also very curious, Gil, you know, it's almost like, you, you know, you get to call someone out, uh, you know, at, at the playground <laughs> with <laughs> being a top team. Um, and obviously, I would imagine there will be some analytics involved. Um, but hey, if you're that team that gets called out, you get called to the mat, so to speak. Wouldn't that be something if you get an upset? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and and it makes for a little more passion and a little more bad blood, uh, so to speak, between teams. Because, you know, the, the team that gets called out, they, they think we're the easiest team they could face. And that has got to be, you know, a, a challenge to these players. Yeah, for sure. And so just to give a little bit more of a playoff picture, I know I talked about Natalie Spooner and PWHL Toronto. I mean, 11 wins consecutive. They have 36 points and are at the top of the table right now. Just a reminder that the season will end in May. So there will be a little bit of a reprieve or a break um, for the Women's Worlds, which is happening in Utica, New York in uh, April next month already. My goodness. A uh, few weeks <laughs> from now. Um, and then after that, we have PWHL. Minnesota. Uh, we we haven't talked too much about trades. There's been a lot of trades, but PWHL Minnesota, one of the first teams, they actually um, acquired Sophie Jakes through a trade, a, defend, a defender who is from well, has played in the area. She went to the Ohio State University. They're sitting at uh, 33 points, second in the field. PWHL Montreal uh, and PWHL Ottawa would be the last two teams in. Montreal has 30 points uh, on the table. PWHL Ottawa has 24. Right behind Ottawa, though, is Boston. Now, these two teams, Rachel, I think it's been interesting to see them struggle, uh, particularly to get um, points on the board because they're not winning in regulation or quite honestly, no. uh, you know, being able to win in extra time either. And that's kind of hurting their stock, so to speak in the, uh, playoff positioning. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, um, if any of the trades yet, we're not even a full weekend from some of these trades. I'm not sure if that will change the trajectory for either of these teams, but one team that hasn't really made much of a splash, Rachel, in with, with some of the, the trades that we can get into on the next episode in more detail with a little bit more data, but that's PWHL New York. Uh, they're sitting, they haven't even cracked 20 points yet. And there has also been reporting, Rachel, that, um, I guess Abby Rock is picking her own line mates and it's not necessarily been working. <laughs> yeah. This team has been struggling in many ways and they're just, I, there's such this lack of consistency that I feel like they're just throwing stuff at a wall to try and see what sticks and it's not working. Um, and I think, you know, it's mostly honestly to the credit of the other teams, but I just think they're, because of that, they're just so easy to figure out from game to game. And I, you know, and that coupled with some of the arena issues, which Oof. we'll get into a little bit, uh, yeah. I think, I think all of it has come together to make it a difficult season for New York. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Minus the arena issues. I thought we were talking about the PWHL, not the Seattle Kraken. I got that show later. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you know, jokes aside about the Seattle Kraken, you can listen to Logs on Kraken to hear me moan about that. But um, I think what we do see with PWHL New York is um, perhaps a general manager and a head coach who have – twice to media um, broadly. And then when I was at media day had confirmed that they don't know their players, uh, that they're not familiar with their players. And I think that's what we're seeing play out comparative to other teams where you have teams that have struggled and can't get things together, but they're not kind of throwing the spaghetti on the wall, so to speak. It's to your point, Rachel, that the other teams are just scheming. They have more support perhaps in their analytics department and are game planning better. I don't think that 
New York is out, out game planning anyone, <laughs> you know, I right. I, exactly. I, I'm not even sure they, except for maybe themselves. I don't know because it just <laughs> seems like you said the, the lack of consistency, the reporting that maybe Abby rock is in control of her own line mates. To me, that just speaks to that. There's not someone from outside of uh, the ice whether as, as a coaching staff and, and certainly as a front office that is taking control and taking ownership of where this team is going. But as you said, uh, arena hopping. So the last, I think Gil, it was the last um, showcase that we had before we focused on trade deadline on locked on NHL. We did talk about that. We were going to see uh, actually a weekend where we would have the PWHL at some different arenas. We knew this was going to happen when the league was announced and Detroit was one of those as well as uh, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has, I mean, Rachel, you and I have talked about this before, but Pittsburgh yeah. has really been entertaining women's hockey at all levels for a really long time. And so, of course, neither one of these neutral sites disappointed. And we're actually going to see the the PWHL also, um, it won't be neutral site because uh, I guess Montreal does have a team, but we're going to see at one of the largest NHL arenas, at least that the PWHL has tried, that they once again will will sell out, um, and that's a, a Montreal game. Um, so the the model is looking good at face value, but we have two teams, and they're actually on opposite sides of the standings that don't fit into what we're seeing as the overwhelming model of breaking history for women's ho- uh, hockey games, and that is the PWHL Toronto team, and that's because they play at Mattamy, which has a lot of historic value. Um, The Toronto Maple Leafs of yesteryear played there, Um, but it's a small rink. In, in, it's, a, yeah. it's a college size rink, you know, um, literally the, the, the local college, Toronto Metropolitan plays there. The, and then you have PWHL New York, who, Gil, I know you're familiar with UBS, great yes. facility, one of the newest alongside Climate Pledge Arena. So it's not that they don't have capacity to get some of those record numbers, but they, PWHL New York is having that time old issue that we've seen in women's pro hockey, where you want to be in the New York metropolitan area, but maybe you're not marketing the team to where the hockey fans are. It's certainly the women's hockey fans are in the New York metropolitan area, which Rachel, you and I know tends to be New Jersey. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, so yeah, it's just kind of wild to see that. But Rachel, what are what are your thoughts on the the reporting? We've seen Dan Rice, who of course covers the the New Jersey Devils and covered the um, Metropolitan Riveters in the P and the NWHL slash PHF, but he's reported and Ian Kennedy also reporting Rachel that we're gonna see some games played by PWHL New York in New Jersey. So they will officially be the tri-state team now played in Connecticut, (laughs) New York, and now New Jersey. (laughs) Honestly, I think the Connecticut side of things, like I I just really feel like Connecticut is its own thing. And, you know, to try and attract New York fans to a game in Connecticut is exceedingly difficult. It just, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I understand then trying, okay, we're going to put some of the games at UBS Arena, but it's not on the subway system, and it's not on the PATH train. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, I know Long Island Railroad is a thing, but I, it's a mental block that a lot of people in the city have. And especially when you have such a strong youth hockey uh, base, especially girls youth hockey in North Jersey, uh, with all those programs that are run out of there, like, Playing in Newark just makes sense. It just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, we'll have to see officially where they play. But I'm, I'm with you, it, it, especially since we've seen so much overlap with NHL arenas. We know that the Metropolitan Riveters used to play at uh, Barnabas, Barnabas Health hockey house that's a a, a mouthful but that's literally connected to prudential center it's the practice facility of the new jersey devils we've seen women's hockey there before um 
And um, yeah, I, I think whether it's at Barnabas or even at, at, at the rock um, that that's likely where we're to see these games, because honestly, Gil, it doesn't make sense to put them anywhere else because then you run into the same problem that you, that Rachel talked about in Bridgeport that we talked about in Toronto. And of course um, I don't think that they're going to have the same issue that they have at UBS. Well, we're looking forward to that for sure. Erica, thank you so much. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Thank you both. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And I have deep regrets about not picking Duquesne to win. I was talking to somebody in Pittsburgh about a watch party and she said bet on Duquesne put the money down I didn't should have done it just just regret it uh, so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on those college hoops until they cut down the nets and don't regret it like I do Busy weekend of hockey ahead and a lot of games spread out this weekend, which uh, makes it for an interesting schedule. Four games tonight. Uh, the first one that catches my eye, Carolina in Washington, the Capitals battling for a playoff spot, the Hurricanes battling for first place. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was talking about earlier in the show that Washington does not have an easy schedule from here on out. And this is, you know, the first game of that stretch. And Carolina is coming off an overtime win against the Flyers. And they're just not backing down. They made some smart strategic moves at trade deadline. Jake Gensel is fitting in really well. So this is, this is going to be a really important game for the Caps if they're going to keep up. No question. And then Pittsburgh, who is more or less fading in the East, going into Dallas. We mentioned the Stars in that three-way battle for first place. Yeah, another another really huge matchup here. And uh, I, I mean, I, I think I want to pick Dallas here, but again, you never know. <laughs> Moving over to Saturday, only 11 games uh, on the Saturday schedule, which is light for the NHL. Uh, Winnipeg and the Islanders are uh, opening things up on Saturday afternoon and the Islanders, if they don't win this game, I, I think they're more or less toast now losers of six in a row. Yeah, it's been a, a tough stretch for the Islanders. I thought they got it back for a little bit there, but then things went south again, both afternoon games actually with these huge implications um, and of course, as we talked about, the Jets are, are trying to keep that divisional lead there in the central. Um, and then at the same time, that's the Boston Flyers game that I talked about earlier. Right. So definitely going to be flipping back and forth between those two games. Two teams in the West that are sort of on the outside trying to get in facing each other. St. Louis and Minnesota uh, loser, I think, is in big trouble. Yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. Um, I, I honestly, the way they've been playing, I would put the money on the blues for this game. Uh, but, uh, I think that there's some incentive there for Minnesota as well. So, uh, we'll see how that one plays out. The Detroit Red Wings battling for playoff spot in the East, the Nashville Predators battling for a playoff spot in the West. They meet in Nashville at five o'clock Eastern time. I like this matchup. Yeah, I think, you know, for the last little stretch, a lot of people have been saying Detroit is cooked, they're done, they're over. I don't know, could <laughs> could change things, uh, but this is a, a very important game for them. It's also important for Nashville, uh, my team, to go forward in uh, the wild card spot there. So both teams have, have a huge, huge task on their hands here. Edmonton and Toronto, that'll be a great game on hockey night in Canada always uh, is when you have a good all Canadian matchup like this. And um, we'll see if uh, Connor McDavid can rack up some points to try and catch Nikita Kucherov here. The Florida Panthers and New York Rangers meet at eight o'clock Eastern time on national TV in the United States, two teams 
battling for first place in their respective divisions. Yeah, and for league supremacy, you know, to a large degree here, uh, if there's any game that should be on national TV, this is it. Uh, and I am so excited to watch this game because I, I definitely also want to see how these two match up against each other for a potential uh, playoff series, you know, two, three rounds in, right? Yeah, that would be an entertaining series for sure. And the late game, 1030 Eastern time start that we're going to focus on, the Tampa Bay Lightning in L.A. to take on the Kings. And both these teams need the points. They do. I think Tampa is pretty solid where they are right now. Uh, but that being said, I think, you know, they want to keep winning going. Again, another team that made some uh, really strategic moves at the trade deadline that have worked so far and the Kings just really needing to maintain their position as well and, and kind of go into this playoff run on a high note to end this season. So uh, a big game for both teams. Sunday, there are uh, 10 games on the schedule. Winnipeg and Washington, that's a East-West battle with playoff implications in both conferences. Yeah, and of course, Winnipeg uh, coming off that back-to-back -back situation so they could have some tired legs uh but you know it, it's it's a must-win situation for the caps as well so um a very good start to the afternoon on sunday for the nhl the tnt game sydney crosby and the penguins against the colorado avalanche I do not know what the Pittsburgh Penguins are or what they are doing, um, what <laughs> what anything means with them anymore. Uh, but I think you know running up against the Colorado Avalanche is not an easy task here. Um, and you know, uh, I, I I just think the Avs have the upper hand here. Looks that way for sure, and it's in Colorado, uh, six mm -hmm. o'clock Eastern Time, Toronto and Carolina. Yeah, another big matchup uh, in the East. And um, I, I mean, as an outside observer, there are no winners in this game, but there will be a winner in, in it. Um, it's hard for me to root for a winner in this situation. Uh, but I think that, you know, I want the, no, there are no winners. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> And let, let's wrap it up with the tough game for your Philadelphia Flyers hosting the Florida Panthers, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Yeah, and of course, you know, coming off, uh, both teams will be coming off the back-to-back. -back, the Panthers having played the Rangers the day before in that big national TV game. The Flyers will have played the Boston Bruins the day before. Uh, these two teams actually match up really well against each other, having, you know, seen them so far this season. And, you know, the styles kind of match up really nicely. And the Flyers can play the Panthers, um, you know, real tight. So I think that this will be a much more competitive game than some people might think. Yeah, looking forward to seeing that one for sure. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for us today. I will be back Monday interviewing three of our local hosts about the top stories of the day. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, and thanks for listening to and watching the Locked On NHL podcast.